There are some beautiful wild roses nearby on one of my walking routes. I'd never taken a rose cutting before, but I thought I'd give it a go. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a cutting of a wild dog rose and the first year of its life. The first step is to find a dog rose that has some rose hips on display. These can be found at the end of the year, around October-November time. Take a cutting of a branch which has a few healthy smaller branches and also contains some hips. Using a sharp, clean pair of socketeurs, make a clean cut like so. Each of the smaller branches will be planted and hopefully will become its own plant. And then take this home, being careful with the sharp thorns. To plant these cuttings, you'll need some small pots, your branch, some rooting compound, and some all-purpose or potting compost. Fill the pots with the compost and firm it down. This is so the cutting doesn't have as much space to move around, which will keep it secure while it grows roots. Using a pencil or a small stick, make a hole in the compost. Then we need to make a smaller cutting of our branch, each of which will have its own pot. Your cutting should be as long as your hand, ideally straight, and should not be damaged. We'll now clean this up by removing all of the side shoots and the leaves, leaving just the end leaf. Then we'll just snip off the end of the cutting, above the last leaf like so. To encourage root growth, dip the bottom of the cutting into the rooting compound, and then place it into the hole. Firm down the sides a little to secure the cutting in place. I'm going to take three cuttings in all, and I'll show you another one just so you can see the process again. Take the cutting, clean up the leaves, snip off at the top just above the last leaf, dip into the rooting compound, place it in the hole, and firm it down. My compost was quite damp already, but if yours is dry, give this a good water. Over the winter, all you really need to do is keep them protected. Water the compost if it gets dry, but make sure not to overwater or it will risk rotting your cutting. If the weather is mild, you can keep the cutting outside, but keep them under cover if you're going to have any frost on the way. Keep them in a sheltered area if you're expecting strong winds too. Don't be surprised if the cuttings look like they're not doing anything over the winter. They may not change much from week to week. Spring is when we should start to see some buds and new growth. Each of my cuttings have multiple buds, but they still need to be kept under cover and protected during frosty weeks. The buds will grow quicker with the increase in sunlight hours, and they should be moved to a sunny and warm location. For the next few weeks I keep them safe in a cold frame. About four weeks into spring I did a quick root check, but nothing is on show yet, but the buds are continuing to grow. It was about this time that I lost one of my cuttings, because it kept getting snagged whilst taking it in and out of the cold frame. Keep this in mind when choosing a location to keep them in, and move them as little as possible. By week 20 the first leaves are unfolding, and this will really ramp up the energy that the plant can take in. More and more leaves will develop over the next few weeks, and they're really starting to look established. By mid-April, depending on the size of your pot, you should start to see roots showing through the drainage holes. This indicates that the plant is ready to be moved onto a larger pot. This is straightforward and really fun. Grab some larger pots and fill the bottom with compost. Put enough in so that when the smaller pot is put inside, the tops of the pots are level. With the smaller pot left inside, fill the larger with compost, being careful not to damage the cutting. Press the compost down as you go to remove any air holes.
Remove the smaller pot leaving a very pleasing hole the same size as the smaller pot. Turn over the pot to remove the cutting and squeeze the sides of the pot gently to help the plant slide out if it's being stubborn. Catch it as it slides out like so. Then drop the whole thing into the hole and gently firm it down. You can top up the pot with extra compost if you need to. Place the pots in a tray of water and leave for 15 minutes for the compost to soak up as much water as it can. With more nutrients and room for roots, the plant will grow quickly over the next few weeks. Now that we have warmer, longer days, don't let the compost dry out and you can keep these pots in a sunny location. Oh, and keep an eye out for aphids too, which will be attracted to the new growth. Rub them off with your thumb or knock them off the leaves, being careful not to shake the cutting around too much. As we get round to summer, the growth will speed up and lots of branches and leaves will continue to grow. I'll let the next 10 weeks speak for themselves. Autumn has come and the plants are almost ready to go in the ground. They've grown really well this summer and it's hard to think that they were just a stick in a pot to start with. When planting out into their final position, choose an area which is sheltered, ideally against a fence or a wall, where there's lots of vertical space for growing. Clear away any mulch and then dig a hole the same depth as the pots. Make sure the top of the pot is level with the soil surface and then remove the plant from the pot by turning it over and squeezing the sides to ease it out again. If you've got lots of roots coming out of the drainage holes at the bottom, this can make removing the plant a little more difficult. Untangle these and the plant should slide out. Now check on the roots. If they're very tangled, you can loosen these up a bit, which will help the plant to root down into the soil. Place the plant into the hole and sweep the soil back around to fill any gaps. You can press down with your foot to secure the plant in place and to stop it moving around too much in the incoming windy weather. To protect the plant from frosts, I'd recommend covering the soil around the plant with mulch or manure. I'll show me plant in the second one so you can see the process again. I hope you found this video useful and it encourages you to try taking your own cuttings. If you've got any tips or advice for others, please pop them in the comments so we can all benefit from your experience. Thank you to my patrons for their support and you can find more information in the description if you wanted to get involved. Here are some other videos you may enjoy, including this video on training climbing roses into a simple fan shape. Thank you for watching and happy growing.